I will now continue our discussion on crimes against person, but this time we will distinguish between homicide from physical injuries. So some points to remember. We have to take note that in consummated homicide, the law conclusively presumes there is intent to kill. So even if there is no intent to kill and the victim dies, you cannot file physical injuries because with respect to crimes of personal violence, the penal law looks particularly to the material results following the unlawful act and holds the aggressor responsible for all the consequences thereof. That's in U.S. versus Gloria. But in attempted and frustrated homicide, the intent to kill is not presumed and may be proven otherwise. So, if the injury inflicted is slight and not fatal, it means the offender does not perform all the acts of execution of homicide. In other words, if the offender does not inflict a mortal or fatal wound, he has not performed all the acts of execution of homicide and therefore he is only liable for attempted felony of physical injuries. So if the wound inflicted is serious or mortal and the offender performs all the acts of execution but the victim does not die because of causes independent of the will of the perpetrator, he is liable for frustrated homicide. If there is no intent to kill, the crime is only physical injuries, whether serious or less serious or slight physical injuries result thereof. But if the injuries were fatal but were due to negligence, the crime committed is reckless imprudence resulting to physical injuries. For this particular discussion, we will listen to the report of Karen Agimud. GR number L17666, June 30, 1966. Isidoro Mondragon vs. The People of the Philippines. Elements of homicide That the person was killed, that the accused killed him without any justifying circumstances, that the accused had the intention to kill, which is presumed. That the killing was not attended by any of the qualifying circumstances of murder or by that of parricide or infanticide. Facts of the case The petitioner Isidro Mondragon was persecuted in the court of first instance of Iloilo of the crime of frustrated homicide. On July 11, 1954, the complainant Serapio Nacionales was opening the dike on Fish Rice Field in Antandan, Miyagao, Iloilo. When petitioner Mondragon told him, Don't you dare open the dike? Nationales told Mondragon that he needed to open the dike because he had to plant the next morning. But Mondragon tried to hit him. When Nationales dodged the blow, Mondragon drew his bolo and hit Nationales in several parts of his body. The complainant hacked Mondragon with his bolo in self-defense, after which Mondragon backed down. The complainant had a medical exam the following day and the government medical officer certified that his wound would heal in less than 30 days. During his trial, Mondragon admitted that he would do everything to stop Nationales from opening the dike. From this admission, the Court of Appeals held the Court of First Instance conviction of attempted homicide. The issue of the case whether or not the petitioner is guilty of the crime of attempted homicide and not of the crime of less serious physical injuries. The ruling The Supreme Court held that the intention to kill being an essential element of the offense of frustrated or attempted homicide, said element must be proved by clear and convincing evidence. That element must be proved with the same degree of certainty as it is required of the other elements of the crime. The inference of intent to kill should not be drawn 
in the absence of circumstances sufficient to prove such intent be unreasonable doubt. In People v. Villanueva, 51 Philippines, 488. We hold that the facts brought out in the decision of the Court of Appeals in the present case do not justify finding that the petitioner had the intention to kill the offended party. On the contrary, there are facts brought out by the decision appealed from which indicates that the petitioner had no intention to kill, namely, the petitioner started the assault on the offended party by just giving him fist blows. The wound inflicted on the offended party were of slight nature, indicating no homicidal urge on the part of the petitioner. The petitioner retreated and went away when the offended party started hitting him with a bolo, thereby indicating that if the petitioner had the intended to kill the offended party, he would have held his ground and keep on hitting the offended party with his bolo to kill him. The element of intent to kill not having been duly established and considering that the injuries suffered by the offended party were not necessarily fatal and could be healed in less than 30 days. We hold that the offense that was committed by the petitioner is only that of less serious physical injuries.